What is going on guys, I'm Steven and welcome back to another China phone video. Now today we're going to have a look on what we can find inside of an iPhone clone from China. Now first of all, this has nothing to do with Apple. Even though you will maybe see an Apple logo on the smartphone, but this is not made by Apple, so those are just some cheap ripoffs from China. And today I want to show you for educational purposes what you can find inside of a Chinese iPhone clone and why they are so cheap and slow and whatever. So let's get started guys, let's open it up and let's have a look on what we can find inside. Now here you can see this iPhone 6 Plus clone and I still want to do a review on this because it's a one to one clone but you will see you can't compare it with a real iPhone, maybe from the outside, but if you start to use it, you will notice, no, that can't be a real iPhone. But anyway, from the outside, it looks completely equal. So be really aware of this, because you can easily get scammed with those devices. On this device, they even made the App Store, which is actually the Play Store, because this device is running Android, look like the real App Store. So on the first look, it's really hard to tell the difference. But anyway, um, I will still do a review on this, and this is why we take the Wii phone here apart. This is an iPhone 6 clone, not a real one-to-one -one clone because it's missing the logos. Also here the ROM looks a little bit different, but the rest really looks like an iPhone, but it's not a real one. Here you can see the Wii phone logo, and it has the same dimensions, you can also use a real protection covers or anything. But yeah, it is not a real iPhone, and it will never be a real iPhone. But anyway, today we're going to take this apart, so let's get started. Okay, so to open up this phone here, which is called the Wii Phone, you have to unscrew the two star screws left and right from this fake lightning USB port here. And in German we say torque screws, I think it's also called in English like this. But they are very small as you can see. I don't even have such a small torque screwdriver. So I will just use here a Philips flathead to open it up. Um, you can also use a sharp knife for this, just anything which has a very small tip. And now here you can see this, it's a very small screw, so be sure not to lose it, because they are very small and it's really hard to get such screws. So be really careful with this. And yeah, I will just unscrew here the second one. And after we have removed the screws, we can lift up the glass. So it's just like on the iPhone for instance, I think it's opened up by the same way. You just remove the two screws here and then you just lift up the glass. Now I'm opening up such a clone for the first time. I'm really not sure if you can remove the bottom case shell first or you have to lift up the glass in the display first. But I will just try to lift up the glass in display just like with the real iPhone. Let's see if that works. And I have here the suction pad here and I will just try to lift it. And as you can see this is also working. So if you have enough pressure here it comes off. And I will try this first, so it's glued to the frame, I hope I don't break anything, so just give me a minute to remove it, and I will use those tools here to lift everything up, and then we can have a look on what we can find under the glass and under the display, so let's go. Okay, I could lift up the whole glass with the display, it was glued to the case, so next time it would be better to heat it up, I didn't expect that there's so much glue in there. But here you can see it's still connected with the flex cable of the LCD and the flex cable of the digitizer. So I can't access the mainboard from this side, you can just see here the SD card and also the SIM card slot. Here you can also see the home button. And this one here is made out of metal, looks actually pretty good. Under this you can see the touch sensitive home button. And yeah, it's not a fingerprint scanner as expected. But anyway, what I will try to do now is separate that plastic shell here from the back metal cover.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now here it is, the metal cover made out of metal, so aluminium, also gold from the inside. And here we can see a lot of milling traces, so I guess this is CNC milled. And here we can see the connectors, those are actually for this mute button here, which is connected with a flex cable, and those contacts here to the mainboard. Here we have the plastic lenses for the camera, then here at the bottom some more plastic. Basically that's the whole metal thing. And I have to say, it's very stable. I tried to bend it with a lot of pressure here, but yeah, I can't do it. Also the real one not, so just the iPhone 6 Plus had the issues. And I will also do a bend test with the fake phone. But yeah, I have to say, um, the metal body here looks really nice. I'm pretty excited about the build quality for such a cheap replica here. But let's just have a look at the other metal parts. Now here we have the volume rockers. Also the volume rockers are made out of metal. And yeah, they actually feel pretty good. On the old iPhone 5 clones there was a huge issue with them, also with the mute button. But here it's much better. Then let's have a look at the mainboard battery and all that stuff. Now if you start to look at the battery, you can see it was advertised with a 1600 mAh battery. But in reality you get a 1300 mAh battery. And the real iPhone has an amazing battery of 1800 mAh. So as you can see, you always have fake specs on those clones. Okay guys, then now let's have a look at the mainboard. And first of all, I have to say a lot of things have been improved. This looks really better than any iPhone 5 clone, but there are still some cheap components. Now let's have a look here at the battery contact. So here we have plus and minus. And if you can't flash your smartphone anymore, if it's bricked, try to open it up and desolder the battery. You can also try to find the reset button. And basically you have those golden pads on the mainboard and you have to ground the reset pad. That triggers META mode and makes a preloader pop up and then you can flash your smartphone again. Usually it's some of the points here, sometimes RST, but you have to try it. That depends on the mainboard layout. And don't ground plus to minus, so make sure you don't ground VBAT plus. Now here we have the vibration motor which is connected to a flex cable, which is connected to the mainboard. Here we have the Wi-Fi antenna connector, and this contact basically just touches the metal shell. Then here we have the front speaker, which is soldered to the mainboard. We also have here the front camera, which is connected with a flex cable to the mainboard. Then left from that we have the digitizer connector, you can see here the IC which controls it. And yeah, we can just remove that cable, so we have to open up that connector here and then just slide the cable out. And you see there is still the sticker on the cable which should actually secure the cable on the mainboard. But anyway, that's not really important. Then let's just have a look here at the back camera, also connected with a flex cable, way bigger than the front camera as always. And here we have the LCD connector. So this is the cable for the LCD. And we can also open up here the connector and just slide out the cable. Then what you will notice, you have two cables. You have one for the digitizer and one for the LCD. On Samsung phones, for instance, the um, digitizer is directly on the LCD, so you just have one cable. But China phones usually come with two. Here you can also see several other connectors, several of those golden pads. But um, to trigger preloader mode, have a look at the pads near the battery. Okay, then let's go down the phone here. Here we can see that huge battery, but unfortunately just 1300 milliamp hours. You see, it got advertised with 1600, also it got advertised with 16GB of RAM, we'll later see if it's true. Here you have some other ground points, you can also use this one. Here another flex cable connector, this is um, I guess here for the lightning port. Then let's go down here, here we can also see the speaker. Now it looks like the speaker is soldered to the main board, but yeah, we'll later see if it's really the speaker or just that thing here. Then here at the bottom we can see also the GSM antenna connector, the 3.5mm um, headphone jack and the USB connector, so this fake lightning port. Okay, then let's try to get out the battery and boom, there we go. And here you can also see the flex cable which actually connects the bottom PCB here to the mainboard. So that is replaceable if you just fuck up your USB connector, uh, your USB port, sorry, then you can replace that part. But you have to have a look at the cable number here. So usually there's a build number on the cable or on the PCB. And you have to Google it or just ask some Chinese seller and if he can send you this part. 
Okay, now basically that's it. What I will try to do now is just separate the main board here from the metal shell and then we can have a look at the chips. So let's go. Okay ladies and gentlemen, I could remove the mainboard and let's have a look at this metal carrier plate. Yes, also the inside is metal, that's why the chips don't have RF shields. So actually they are protected here through this metal thing. Here we have the speaker which is connected with those two contacts to another thing which is connected or solar to the mainboard. Here the bottom PCB once again. And yeah, as you have seen, there are no real antennas here in the smartphone, so it just uses the case, and yeah, the reception was pretty bad, and later you will also see the GPS antenna and why it's just a piece of shit. Then let's have a look here at the mainboard, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. A lot of actually pretty good quality chips. Um, here we also have a SanDisk microSD, so that's basically the microSD card of your smartphone. And that's not the main memory. So there's also another memory which is soldered to the main board. And this micro SD card can be upgraded, I think, to a maximum 64 gigs or something. Here we have the nano SIM card slot. And surprisingly, I found a Samsung chip in the fake iPhone from China. And this one here is a flash memory. And let's just have a quick look here at the number on the chip. And let's go to the Samsung webpage. Now here on the Samsung webpage, I could find out that this chip is an onboard memory EMMC 8 gigabytes. So you have 8 gigabytes of internal memory plus 8 gigabytes SD card, which equals 16 gigabytes. So this is actually true and not fake, as I told you in my last video where I have tested this clone. Okay, so now you can see the heart of this phone, which is the MediaTek MT65 A2 SoC system on chip. So basically that's the main chip of the smartphone and that's also the reason why the smartphone is so cheap. The Apple chips are so much more expensive than the MediaTek chips and we can just have a quick look on AliExpress. So you can get this SoC which has the CPU, GPU, everything integrated for just about $15 or something. And let's just have a quick look on this MediaTek chip. Now here it is guys, on AliExpress the MediaTek MTK6582, exactly the same chip we have in our iPhone clone. Quad-core SoC, that means we have a quad-core CPU, GPU, everything integrated in that chip. And Apple chips are way more expensive and you can't even buy them. So here one chip costs $17 per piece. But if you for instance buy thousands of them, it will just drop to under $10. So basically, they just use some very cheap chips. And that's exactly why those clones are so cheap, because they're using a MediaTek chipset. Everything is integrated here, GPS, really everything. And for instance, Samsung buys some very high power GPS chips. And that's why GPS is so much better on Samsung clones. So you see, the price for the chipset is very cheap, and that's why you can buy such a cheap clone for just $150. But a cheap chipset doesn't mean that the device must be shit. So that's a clone problem because they are stuck with the design because they want to make it look like an iPhone and they can't just build really good antennas. So here we just have this GPS connector thing which connects somewhere to the metal case here and GPS never worked on that clone. This is because there's no real antenna so there's just this little piece of shit and I can't get a GPS reception at all. So it really depends on which phone layout you have. 
You can use a cheap chipset, but you can also make a good device. But with clones, usually um, everything is shit. But anyway, don't get scammed guys. I hope this video was very informative for you. And always think twice when you buy such a clone. First of all, if they have a logo, they are counterfeit. That means they could get destroyed by customs. Second, you may get fake specs, as you have seen. The battery is just fake, it's not 1600 mAh, it's just 1300 mAh. And also GPS is not working because the antenna layout is just a piece of crap. And yeah, that's basically it, so you get what you pay for guys, $150 for a phone without working GPS. I mean, um, if you just want to have a clone, I wouldn't mind it to have it as a spare phone. For instance, if I go to a party and I'm totally drunk, then I would just take this phone and throw it into the pool. Whatever, I wouldn't care about this phone and that's actually pretty good because just $150 down the shitter. Anyway, you can find a link down below to check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching guys and I hope I see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.